update part the second. Um, wow, it's very odd hearing my voice as I hear it after hearing it out the speakers. Um, I'll try and talk clearly, by the way, and I'm awful at that. Um, so, what's going on with me? It has changed, so I feel I should say, purely because I've said before, for sooner reason I think it's necessary. Um, I was going to go to Edinburgh and do English and film, and then I got totally disheartened with the idea, I thought. There's no way I want to do four years of very similar subject to what I'm doing now that feels ultimately quite useless. And then I also had the issue of Edinburgh. I love it there, but, you know, it's it's a flight away from where I live. Um, I've got a lot going for me here right now. I think I've got the band, which I know it's not going to get me anywhere in life, but it's something I really enjoy. I've got friends. You know, my whole life's around here. And I also feel like I'm starting to make progress in filmmaking with people around here, so like to say, film I'm working on my old, where I did my film course recently. Um, so I did that idea and I was thinking, you know, I'll just keep sort of networking here and, um, yeah, working and stuff. And then I got to thinking about what I would do to progress in the film industry and I reconsidered my other option for uni, my insurance offer in UCAS, which was in Salisbury, which I was at the day for some solstice actually, it's Stone Hand, which was really cool. Maybe that's what got me thinking. And that's a film production cinematography course. I'd ruled that out because I thought for the money, it wasn't really worth it because it doesn't really necessarily get you a job. But on the other hand, it would be cheaper because it's local, it's three hour course, it's practical, and I feel like I'd be gaining skills, meeting a lot of people, and I don't know, just getting stuff that I've pushed me forward, so I'm currently sewing out my UCAS so I can go do that. And, um, yeah, I think it's a good move, so that's what I've got planned out. Um, but in the meantime, I'm reading books. That's what I'm going to be doing for a long time now, because I don't have to be doing school stuff. Um, right, after my last exam, because this is how I am now, I'm thinking if I do an exam, I can just read. And even after the last one, when I still have this one on my back, that I just did today, I bet it's quarter to seven, which is way too early for me. I'm way too lazy for that. Anyway, I'm going to go grab a book, what I've been reading. Actually finished it that same day after my exam. Um, now, at the moment, I've become quite interested in Andy Kaufman, if anyone's seen Man on the Moon with Jim Carrey. Um, this was a book that... Oh, hello. Oh, oh God, I'm such a tar. Okay, that's a bit better. <laughs> that was embarrassing. I'll read you by now. Oh, which way is which? Because I'm watching me on the screen. Um, yeah, this is a book called Was This Man a Genius? Talks to Andy Kaufman by Julie Hecht. And I forget where I heard about this. I think it was just uh, Googling him, Amazon, typing in the name Andy Kaufman, and then someone recommended it to me. And it's essentially this uh, journalist's encounters with him over several years, I think, in fact, uh, trying to dig at his character. And if you don't know who Andy Kaufman was, he's a very enigmatic character. Not least because he died very young. Many people believe he faked his own death. Um, and it was basically the whole appeal of Andy Kaufman was is he being serious, is he not being serious, is this an act? Because he was a, a complete prankster in most aspects of his life. A very clever man, really manipulative. Um, often seen as like destroying television, all of his aims. So um, needless to say, he's a fascinating guy. But um, in this, you actually start to get a glimpse at his own character. I can't say much for the journalist's writing. I mean, she's really praised on the back. Um, I don't know. I found her role in it a little bit irritating, to be honest. But purely at getting a glimpse under the, the skin of Andy Kaufman, he, he talks very candidly about how he came to be doing what he's doing towards the end. And you actually see you know, what the guy was like. Um, so, I think it's it's really um, a book for fans who are interested in the character, and I think if you're interested in it, these are questions you ask yourself. Um, but as a piece of writing, I wouldn't rate it that highly. I just think it's a nice companion piece to the fandom of Andy Kaufman. Um, and people say Kaufman, Kaufman, but I think it's Kaufman, so... Have a go, make sure when I'm really not too bothered. So that's what I read. And, um... Just got to a few other books now, I might as well keep going. I hope this hasn't been too long so far. These are over here, which is always convenient. Um, 
I've been watching quite a lot of sort of occulty films recently, like mainly like old Hammer films to do with witchcraft and stuff. My mum recommended me this book, The Witch's Trinity, which I've literally read a chapter of. But, um, yeah, I, I just, uh, I watched, um, actually, the film that really made me wonder and stuff like this was, um, Haksan, 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 Ships Plants. It's a Swedish film. I believe Swedish? A silent film. Um, uh, that I really recommend it. It's a brilliant film, but it's kind of done as a documentary about witchcraft and beliefs in witchcraft in the past, like, obviously, to do with the false persecution of people, mainly. Much, much like this film here, which I also watched recently, which I find in general. Um, with fantastic recreations, uh, I believe it was the most expensive film ever made in Sweden at the time. Um, so I just, I found the, the notion, you know, it's a particularly horrifying idea that people were persecuted, you know, and sentenced to death falsely. And from what I understand of this book, that's my phone going off, please don't be ringing me. We're good. Okay. That was, that was a text. Um, yeah, from what I understand of the story, it's just basically how a family turn on this um, elderly woman in the family, I believe the grandmother. Um, and, you know, you know how she becomes accused of witchcraft, and it's it seems like a very... Uh, distressing story, but it seems very interesting. And from what I've read, it's like really nicely set up. It starts with these quotes from um, what's it called? The Malleus Maleficarum. It's to do with the, you know how to deal with witches. It was a, a text from the 1500s or something. 1484, something like that. So I'm guessing. But basically, um, reading the first chapter it just seems very involving and. I think it looks like an interesting read. It's not the kind of thing I normally read because it isn't a classic, but um, I think I'll try and see that through because I'm reading this at the moment. Also, um, basically, I was looking at my bookshelf thinking, what can I get rid of? And I remembered I got this William Burroughs book, Cities of the Red Knight, which I never read. I thought maybe I'd just cut the cover up at all because it's a lovely cover. Then I read the back and the praises are so high. Ken Kesey's saying it's his best book and so that's where I started reading it. And um, again, literally only read like the first segment. The actual first, the book one, the first story, the health officer, is very Naked Lunch-esque. I believe these weave together in somewhat cohesive story, as cohesive as a forest gets. But the introduction really gripped me, because he was talking about uh, this historical account of how he believes that there could have been a utopia if this um, civilization, this, I want to say civilization, but this, uh, this group of people living under these ideals that were very utopian, uh, would have succeeded, it would have like changed the future of how we live, he called it a retroactive utopia. And um, I found that really interesting, so I'm going to give this more of a shot. I believe it's part of a, a series, but um, it's a, a Burroughs book I know very little about, I just picked up a charity shop, and so far it seems pretty cool, so I'm probably going to stick with that. The other book I'm kind of dabbling at the moment, I haven't actually started yet, but um, I've wanted to buy this forever. Uh, but my friend mentioned he had any lent it to me, which is If Chins Could Kill, Confessions of a B-Movie Actor by Bruce Campbell. And uh, Bruce Campbell is, as the title suggests, a B-Movie Actor. He's probably most famous for playing Ash in the old Ed films. I've just always seen interviews with him, he seems like a lovely guy, and he's never really had a break into mainstream films or anything. And he seems like a very um, down-to-earth kind of guy with a, a good uh, wit and sense of humour. So I thought this book would be really interesting. And especially as I'm interested in filmmaking, because it, it would recount, like, you know, the early forays into film we did with his friends, including Evil Dead and the films leading up to Evil Dead. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And those are all the books I'm looking at right now, but, again, I suggest, um, put suggestions in the, in the bar, because I'm up for reading a awful lot at the moment, and I really will. I've also been highly recommended a book called Buddha, Jeff, and Me, because um, I'm quite interested in Buddhism and I'm reading about it. So if anyone has, knows anything about the book and wants to uh, give, give me um, any sort of review or you know comments about that, that'd be really cool, because I'm quite eager to read that and I'm very curious about it. I know very little about it, but it's been very highly praised by some of my friends. So um, that's kind of everything up to date with me that's important, I think. Uh, my band's recording some demos soon, that's pretty cool. And we're playing some festivals locally, which is really nice. And hopefully I can get some filmmaking and just enjoy reading books. And as I've said before, I think Chris is going to probably get back on the bandwagon that I've just about kept rolling at a creek in pace when we're both at uni. Now I'm going to uni again, so, you know. Uh, try and stick with us. I'm going to try and keep regular videos up. Basically, if I finish any of these books, I'll probably 
how she thinks to say about them. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a bit ill at the moment. There they are, cough medicine. Sipping that scissor. So, um, yeah, uh, thanks for sticking with us. Oh, and we've gone over 150 subscribers, which is phenomenal. We've had a lot of subscribers recently. I don't know what I've done to deserve that, so thank you so much. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.